Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, we are firing up the steam locomotive today to test out our steam pipe repair that we did on it a little while back. So uh, that's the goal for today is just to do some testing with it. Had a lot of comments that you guys wanted to see this uh, happen. So heck, we brought the camera out today and uh, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna open up the firebox. There were a couple of questions uh, that people had in the comments about just a couple of things and uh, we'll just make a quick, couple of quick comments. I will say that I actually did a video uh, several years ago where we I went through the entire firing process and running the locomotive, uh, and I'm going to put a link to that one down below. So if you're interested in this process, I'm not going to repeat all that information, but you can go back and watch that older video if you haven't seen it before. Let's take a peek inside the smoke box and see what's going on. I know it's kind of loud, so hopefully you guys can hear me, but we've got fire in the boiler and uh, basically these tubes that you see back here behind it, that's just where the smoke and all the heat from the fire comes up through there. Those tubes are completely surrounded by water inside the boiler. Uh, but up here on the smoke box end, this is basically just opened up where that all the smoke and all the heat and all the, the, the gases and everything from the fire are gonna go up the smoke stack. Now when the train is in operation, what's happening is, is your exhaust from the steam uh, from the cylinders is shooting up this spout here in the middle and going up this uh, what we call the petticoat and that goes up to the smokestack. That creates a draft which pulls that fire through there and makes that fire burn hotter. Now what you're hearing right now is uh, this pipe coming in here and I had some comments asking about that pipe. This is what's often called the blower. I've also heard it called the flash but uh, this is where uh, you can basically shoot some steam, or in this, in this case right now we're shooting compressed air up the smokestack to kind of simulate what happens when the train is running. So when the train is sitting still like it is right now, we're not out on the tracks, we're not running steam through here, we're able to blow some air up through there or steam up through there and uh, that will create that draft to kind of help the fire go. So right now we're firing, we don't have any steam on the boiler. So uh, we're using compressed air. You might be able to hear the compressor running in the background. That is uh, blowing the, the air up the stack right there. It's also, we're using it to atomize the fuel because we are an oil-fired burner. Um, once we get steam pressure up, we basically will switch over from the air, the compressed air to steam. And uh, same process here gets done, but we're using steam instead. And, uh, but again, we can't do that until we get actual steam pressure on the boiler. So again, the blower, and that's what you're hearing is that compressed air going up the, the smoke stack. Well, so the game plan this morning, again, is we're gonna heat the boiler up. Uh, we're wanting to do this slow, real slow, because we, we, we need to cure that sealant that we put in there on the, on the gaskets in there. And that needs to be done over a slow period of time. So I've got the fire burning kind of low right now. We're gonna let this uh, heat up over a period of a couple of hours, nice and slow, and then hopefully when we bring it out onto the tracks that we'll have time for that uh, sealant to, to have cured and then we're going to take this thing for a spin and check it out and make sure that we have no leaks or anything going on in here. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that for right now and we will bring you guys back later and when we fire get her out on the tracks. Alright guys we are up in the locomotive. I don't know how this audio is going to sound. I'm filming this with my phone but uh, you can see uh, we're up to steam and we're out on the tracks. We're having to do a little maintenance to the tracks as we go around, just do a quick inspection. It's been about a month since the locomotive's been out. So uh, we're picking sticks and limbs up off the tracks and uh, checking all the crossings to make sure there's no mud and stuff down in the grooves. So kind of stop and go, but uh, we're, uh, we're gonna give her a spin and see how she works.
Well guys, we got her fired up this morning. Uh, we took her out for a test spin, did a little bit of maintenance out on the track while we were out, just basically picking sticks and limbs up and making sure all the crossings and stuff where there wasn't any rocks or dirt got down into the uh, where the, the flanges of the wheels go. Um, but we're ready to run this locomotive now. Um, bringing it back in and, and looking at it, there are absolutely no signs of any steam leaks in here whatsoever is awesome very good um, I didn't expect there to be but you never know so uh, like I said we'll keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks as they run this thing and just uh, check on it from time to time to make sure that no leaks have developed but uh, I really don't see any reason why there should be as far as the blast nozzle goes uh, it's hard to tell really for me to notice any big differences between uh, now and before to me it did seem like it was you know chugging a little bit more when you gave it some throttle but the way we run this locomotive, it's kind of slow speed most of the time. And about the only time you really open that throttle up is if you're going up a little hill or something. A lot of times you're just kind of idling around. So, you know, it's, it's going to honestly be a little difficult to see a huge difference. But uh, I think I could at least tell a little bit of difference when we did get that throttle opened up. So hopefully it'll help out a little bit there. Um, but all in all, it is a success. So uh, everything looks good here. While we're wrapping this project up you know the repair is done but and i mentioned this at the very beginning of the series my long-term goal is is we actually want to make a brand new steam pipe to go in here and that's still on the list to do right now again we were just trying to get it where it was repaired where we didn't have a steam leak in here to kind of get us by until we can get a new steam pipe made uh, honestly i don't know that we'll ever absolutely need to have another steam pipe made at this point in time. This repair very well could last forever, but I will feel better to know that we've got a part that we can come in, put back in here if for some reason we ever have a failure and need to, rather than being back in an emergency type situation. So when we started this project, and I really didn't talk, talk a whole lot about it, one of the very first things that I did after we got that steam pipe out is, is I, I made a lot of measurements uh, again, we had those blueprints that we were working off of. The blueprints were not uh, to the right scale for this locomotive. They were for a larger locomotive of the same manufacturing company, but wasn't exactly like our steam pipe, but it was, it was close. And going in there and actually making some measurements and, and what have you. Working with my buddy Charles Marlin, who uh, does a lot of CAD work, he was able to model uh, that steam pipe up in SolidWorks. It kind of took a, you know, just a, first swing and we didn't expect it to be a perfect match but we you know we were going to try it out uh, and this was before we had the 3d scan done before we knew we were even going to be able to get the 3d scan done uh, from that 3d model um, we actually had a 3d print made of the steam pipe and uh, this was done by tim springer who i've collaborated with some on some 3d printing and he used it on one of his uh, printers that he has. Actually, it was done in four pieces, and we just glued it together, basically. Uh, he was trying to get it done fast because it, it, that was at the very beginning of this project, and the quality of the print is not that great at all. It's just kind of, let's get it out. We want to make it sure it'll fit. And I brought this in here, and we actually did a test fit of this steam pipe in the locomotive, and it worked. Now, the geometry was not exactly right in the pipes themselves, uh, but as it was, I think if we were to make a, this steam pipe in cast iron, it would work. Uh, but now, of course, after we did all this and already had this in hand, that's when uh, the guys came down and did the 3D scan. And now we have the 3D scan that we can take into CAD and actually use that as a model that is an exact uh, duplicate. Uh, but I was super impressed with our first swing on this uh, CAD model it was so close. And like I said, it would work and we were going to go in there and make some adjustments. But now that we have the 3D model, we're good to go. So next step on that project is, is, is I'm collaborating with the University of Wisconsin, actually a professor up there who teaches, contacted me about doing a casting project that he could get some of his students involved with. And at this point in time, we're gonna send them the, the, the 3D scan files, and we're gonna let the students in that class actually draw this thing up in their uh, 3D modeling software. From that, they're gonna learn how to make patterns. They're gonna go and actually build the patterns for this and take this to the foundry and cast a new 
uh, steam pipe for us. I don't know exactly what the time frame of that's going to be. Uh, probably will not, the casting probably will not happen in, before this coming spring. Uh, and really there's some, some things in flux as exactly when that might all come down. But I'm hopeful that at some point in time we'll be able to get a new casting made and uh, we can do the machining on that. And probably what we will do is when we get that new casting, unless we have a blowout in here and this thing just catastrophically fails, we'll probably wait until the next time we have to take the steam pipes out and then put the new one in. Uh, because, well, we just don't like making extra work for ourselves. But that's kind of the game plan there. But I did want to kind of bring you up to speed on that. You'll probably be seeing more about that project as time goes on. My hope is, is that uh, once the Wisconsin team up there is ready to cast this, I'm going to try to work it out. I'm not making any promises right now, but if I can, I'm going to try to take work it out where I can actually go up there and be there when they cast it and get some video of that because I think that'd be real cool footage. But anyway, that's pretty much a wrap on the steam locomotive steam pipe repair project. Uh, like I said, I'm very tickled with what we have. Everything turned out really great. Uh, the, the locomotive ran absolutely wonderful today. You know, I, I, I did notice we have a little bit more power. Uh, felt like to me on the throttle a little bit more power, but a lot of that could be because we're just not losing so much steam in the smoke box anymore. That steam's actually making it to the cylinder now, and that alone will, will help the performance of the locomotive. So this is a big day for us. Uh, we've pretty much been running with a leaking steam pipe for the last past year, uh, but no more. We're in good shape now. So anyway, with that, we're going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, hope you enjoyed this whole series of videos. And uh, we'll be doing some more steam locomotive work uh, as time goes on. I've got several projects on not, not really a rush things that we need to do for the locomotive, but uh, I, I think we're about to get our hands on some of the actual true blueprints for this thing, uh, which is going to help me out with some of these other parts and pieces that I'm wanting to make. So hopefully over the next year or so, we'll have some several more steam locomotive projects to come. Thank you guys for watching. As always, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Leave me some comments. Shoot me an email if you like. And um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time around. Thanks for watching.